Okay, so uh, we were just explaining to the class that even though uh, some of you are not here, uh, I, as far as track is concerned for this class, I do believe we're getting towards the end of that with the exception of fr this Friday, looks like, if the weather holds out for that. And... Thursday, you leave at 11. Okay, that, okay, I was thinking zoology time. That is physical science time, so Thursday and Friday, okay? Then that should be it with the exception of the Dakota Valley Conference. I think Friday is just a junior high meet. Okay. Oh, it does say BE junior high. Okay. That's right. Okay. So... All right. Okay, so again, if you're gone, please make sure you are staying current with this information. Okay, so what is everything you can tell me about hydrocarbons? They're made of hydrogen and carbon. I would expect, well, I would hope that you know the three families that we've talked about so far. The three families we've talked about. That's one. That's two. There they are. Okay. So. So, is there anything else you can tell me about these compounds? So, is that saturated or unsaturated alkanes? Are you sure? Okay. Are you sure? Yeah, that's saturated. That's correct. Okay. Now, whether, say what you want about science or these types of compounds, you, you might, and you could say this doesn't affect me. Yes, I would probably agree that it might not affect you, but Critical thinking skills, problem solving skills, that does affect you, okay? So keep something like that in mind. Okay. So we can. We'll get rolling here shortly. I think we're going to need. If you want, we will come back to these at a later time. And if you do not feel comfortable with these yet, I would highly recommend that you write them down. Okay? So if you choose to tune in at a later time, now is the point where you could hit pause and then be able to write these three compounds in. What vocab? Oh. Also, keep in mind, it doesn't say uh, on this board, but I do believe I updated that on plan book. Today, you're going to get your first paper. It's due on Wednesday. And then also, vocabulary is due, I believe, either on Thursday or Friday. Some of you might have that done already. The reason that's important is... is the probably the as far as deadlines go what critical deadline is tomorrow it doesn't affect you it affects your parents okay today tomorrow is the last day to yes today tomorrow's the last day to file taxes without being penalized now can you file an extension yes you can do that but that has to be filed before the end of business day tomorrow. 
Okay? Or if you go to the post office and you mail your taxes in, as long as the, uh, if you want to call it the, the, the stamp or the date that goes on that envelope, as long as it says April 18th, then you will not be penalized. It probably won't get there until maybe uh, April 25th or something to that effect, 26th, but you will not be penalized. Okay. The reason we bring that up is I would probably be led to believe that if you your parents are receiving a refund, they have probably filed already. Okay. The reason that's important is once you file, you don't have to worry about it anymore. Just like your vocabulary. We probably have said that this might be, let's say, our eighth chapter. We've probably said that eight times now. You get the vocabulary done, it's one less thing to have to worry about. And you are applying that vocabulary on a daily basis. Okay. So this will be wrote in a different color. What is everything that you can tell me about this compound? I, I would expect that right now we should be able to look at that and recognize I, I know what that is right now. It is benzene. Because benzene has what formula? Okay. Now, what happens in ring structures? Everywhere where a line intersects, what's happening at that intersection? Yes, there is a carbon atom. So we just don't, you could write it like this, but this would take quite a while to do. Okay. You're illustrating the same thing, but we don't write benzene rings like that, okay? Then, if you would rather write benzene like this, this would be the simplest way to write it. And that would be, still draw out your structure, then put a circle inside, okay? The reason that you do that is that is a symbol for those alternating double bonds that were in here and with those hydrogens that were on the outside. Once you put that circle inside, it stands for C6H6. Very simple. Okay? It just, it's just a way of simplifying um, learning these chemistry compounds. And if we're really paying attention, I don't think anyone's going to get this, but I could be wrong. I understand, yes, that's two benzene rings, but that also has a common name. It starts with an N. And we even looked it up in your book, even, to confirm it. Are we soaking all this up like a sponge? Okay. Yeah. I realize we're really comfortable, so we make sure we don't fall asleep because we're soaking all this up okay naphthalene I think is how you pronounce that yes okay so two benzene rings put together now you might ask well why why is, is something like this important and I would say again that's probably a good question but it will help your problem solving skills as you get older, okay? Nap, like in take falling asleep. Okay. Then, dee, 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 dee. I'm looking. Okay, that's on page 711. And it's N A P H. T H A L E N E. And it also illustrates the benzene ring. We're talking about this on page. Actually, I'm missing it a little bit. 
on page 711. Shows you benzene and what naphthalene actually is too. Now, it shows compounds on page 710 when you see compounds like cis-2-butene, trans-2-butene. That is something that is maybe a higher order class. We don't get that far in depth. That's more so maybe a little bit at the junior level, but especially at the senior level. We don't, that, that's, not that you can't do it, but in my opinion, that's too complex. Yes? What are we talking about? This here? Okay. You, you talking about this here? Okay. So one of the things we say is X marks the spot. Okay. So this bond to this bond is a what type of bond? Is it a carbon to hydrogen or carbon to carbon? Okay. Okay. So we, we, we just said, I mean, it's not a bad question. Anywhere where a line intersects, where two lines come together, what is forming at that intersection? There's a carbon atom here and a carbon atom here. There's an intersection right here. What type of atom is present there? So what type of bond is that? Hydrogen and carbon? Carbon to carbon. Okay. Okay. Do, do we un understand where lines intersect? There's a carbon atom. Yeah. Okay. Do these two lines intersect here and here? Do those two lines intersect? Yes. yes. Okay. So if those intersect with one another, what type of atom is present there? Carbon. Yeah. Just like over here, this would be the same. So this is a carbon to carbon bond. Okay. So there's one. How many bonds does carbon want? Right. So here's one bond, okay? And how many more are left from what atoms? No. There's a hydrogen, there's a hydrogen, there's a hydrogen. It's just a simpler way of writing. You can, this is the structural formula. There's nothing wrong with that. Just like we could do that down here. Okay, that's CH3, that's CH3. This is also CH3. These mean the exact same thing. It's just a lot more convenient if you want to write it like this. But there's nothing wrong with writing the structural formula like that. Make sense? Yeah. Oh, so, okay, front row. Do we understand this? Yes. Second row. Okay. Don't wring out the sponge. Yes. Okay. And we don't have a starfish walking around too, do we? Oh, okay. It's Pat. Is that Pat? We'll call you Pat. Okay? All right. So, what is everything that you can tell me? Well, let me start over. Which one of these compounds would you like to discuss? Just first, top to the bottom? The bottom one first? Okay. So, when you are doing that, what is the very first thing that you should do? Establish what? Well, it's all single bonds, so we already can tell it's saturated. Okay, uh, we've probably said that. How many times think we've talked about saturated compounds? Quite a bit. Quite a bit. Okay. I'm just, either we forgot, or, okay, saturated means it can no longer, is there an unsaturated compound up here? Yes, because there's a double bonding here. Single bonded compounds are saturated because there are no more bonds that these carbons can hold. Here, okay, 
The reason this is so important that we take this in a slow, progressive fashion is that as a junior, you will learn more about this, but as seniors, you learn the organic reactions that accompany these compounds. And because of where this bond is located, this will determine what it reacts with and how it reacts with compounds. That's why it's so important to know whether it's saturated or unsaturated. So the nine seniors that we have in here are certainly, I would hope, well aware of this. And have any of you ever approached any of your upper level classmates to ask for help should you thought you need help? Ask who last hour? Abby. Okay, and chances are she can help you. Okay, might not want to help you, but chooses to help you. She says she likes this, though. Okay. Oh, good. Get it right. Her nose didn't get longer, did it? Or her, her trousers didn't get warm like liar, liar, pants on fire, did they? Oh, okay. Well, good, good, good. Okay. Now, I think we pointed to the bottom one first, correct? Yeah. Okay, so what is your parent chain? Okay, I couldn't remember if it was 9 or 10. I just had wrote this up here. So what is the name of that compound then for a parent chain? Okay, is there anything branching off of that non-name? Yes, okay. So let's establish this. Is it going left to right as we read it or right to left as we read it okay and the reason for that is okay because this can be in three dimensions like this marker since this is where those methyl groups are does it go in this direction or does it go in this direction and we had already established if these are your methyl groups it goes left to right it cannot no you are correct. Okay. I know. All right. Well, that would be a good idea. So, again, there's nothing wrong with doing this. Putting Once you've established that, go ahead and put these little numbers in here. That is not going to hurt anything one bit. Now, do you have to keep on going? Once you hit six, do we need to keep going? No. You're shaking your head. No, that's correct. Why? Because it doesn't matter because nothing is branching off of the 6th, 7th, 8th, or 9th carbons. Okay. Now it gets to be a little tricky. Okay. Where are your derivatives on this parent chain? Okay. So what is branching off this second carbon like you successfully had alluded to? Carbon and Methyl groups. Okay. And how many methyl groups are there? Two. Okay. So there's also nothing wrong with doing that, doing that, because what do you suppose that M means? It means a methyl group, okay? Is there any other derivatives? No. Where? Yes, there is. Okay? And this is a ethyl group. So for some of you, you can write an E there because you... Probably, some of you probably enjoy this because you get to talk about me. Who better to talk about than me? Okay. Uh, I think I'll pass. All right. Because I don't know if that was that funny. It sure doesn't look like it. Not nah, maybe. I don't know. Okay. So now, how are these listed? By their number or by their alphabetical order? Both. Number. What? Number. There's got to be a reason why we put these letters in here. One, to remind you, and also, what comes first in the alphabet? E does. Even though this number is bigger this is still going to be written first. Okay? So it's always going to take more room than what you think. 
So our first derivative is on the fourth carbon. So we would write four dash what? Okay, you're naming the group, ethyl group. Okay, then where are your other derivatives? Okay, now you might think that this is rather redundant. Okay, redundant means you're repeating yourself. Sometimes, us as staff members, we're probably redundant all the time. Put our phones up, pay attention, put our feet down, things like, I was just using that as an example. I mean, yeah, this isn't our living room, okay? So with that, redundancy means you're just repeating, okay? So we don't write this as just two methyl groups, okay? And here's the redundancy. You need to put two comma two, now dash dimethyl, okay? Because you got two of them, okay? So once you see something like this, you can reverse engineer it and go like, here is our organic family. The reason I say that is, again, you're doing something very similar to what the juniors are doing, but they are moving on to the alcohols already. They already had the alcohols the alkenes, the alkynes, and the alkenes, and the aromatic compounds, and the uh, ring structures. They're just a little further, well, maybe about at the, the same, same amount of con same content we're doing here, but they've arrived at at a lot quicker pace. Yes? If there was trimethyl, what would you call it? Let me try methyl. That's as far as you get. We don't do any tetramethyl groups. That's a senior level. Um, application but it does happen yes okay so this is telling you your organic family so once you see a and e you know that it's saturated that each and every carbon atom has a what type of bond between it okay then this is telling you something important yes your parent chain where there is nine carbons okay what is the formula for a methyl group CH3. So then this di portion is telling you something. That there's two of them. Di means two. What do you suppose this two comma two means? That tells you where they're located. Okay. Then what does this tell you? Okay. And then what does that tell you? where it's located, okay? That is correct. So, this just rolls right off the tongue. Four ethyl, two comma two, dimethyl nonane. Front row. Second row. Wait, so then why do we need a two? Third row. What's that? Yeah, you need to account for both of them. Even though you're saying dimethyl, you still have to write both numbers up there. That's the redundancy. I'm just going to speculate, for instance, um, going to be a stand-in for somebody. How many of you put your phone down at home? Okay, then might be two minutes later. Put your phone down again. Does that sound familiar? Put your phone down. Is this starting to sound familiar? No. No? Okay. Well, well, good. If it doesn't sound familiar, that means you're doing the right thing. Okay? If you're acting right and be doing right, then you are right. Make sense? I'm not smart enough to come up with that. We saw that in a movie this year, an educational movie. Something about figures. Hidden figures. It was Dorothy Vaughn, who was a computer programmer. She wanted to get that Fortran book from the library. And what was her message to her sons? If you act right, something, then I think you are right. I think that was her message. So then when sometimes we sit in here, we're dinking around on our phones, 
We gotta check our Snapchats during class. That's probably not a good idea. You might think it's a good idea, but that is not a good idea. Okay. All right. What do we see here? Or, or I'm sorry, which one would you want to do next? The middle? Okay. So the naming process is not going to change. You establish the longest continuous chain for that one. You do the same thing here. How many carbons are in that parent chain? Seven. Okay. So we will start. What is the prefix for seven? Okay. What type of compound is it? It's saturated or unsaturated? If it's unsaturated, it cannot end in A-N-E. So it ends in E-N-E. Why is that? Because there's a double bond. Yes. Yes. Okay. Unsaturated. Okay. So then the last thing you have to do, this would be correct if okay don't change this okay, I will put it back to where it was heptene would be correct if this was how it was written why would that be right as heptene where is the double bond on this compound on the first one okay and if you really wanted to be specific you could write that Okay, but that double bond is not located after the first carbon. So we need to change this back to what it was. Okay, so now that's how we started. Are we going to go left to right or right to left? It's after the carbon, not before it. Okay, I heard three and I hear four. Get in on this auction. Who says five? Or who says two? Do I hear one? Remember, it comes after the carbon. So is it three or is it four or is it neither? Yes, yes, and if you, if you don't know, well then just do this, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, that's left to right, but if we go right to left, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, so, if we go left to right, okay, that double bond is after which carbon? The fourth. the fourth one. If we go right to left, it's after which one? The third. One. The third. So it has to go right to left. Why does it have to go right to left? Because it's a shorter one? Because it comes no. after. Okay, this is where not being here, yeah. not keeping up is, it, it could, yeah. it could be too. What sport do we think about? Golf. What is the, what do golfers try to do from the tee box to the green where the, try to get the lowest score? Same process here. You want the lower combination, just like up here you'd want the lower combination. So what's, if it's a par five, which means five is a so-so score, four would be pretty good. That's a birdie. Three is even better because it's an eagle. Okay, so do you want an eagle or a birdie? Eagle. You want an eagle. So that means you're going this direction because it's got the lower number. Always put it on the lowest number possible. So how is this possible? It's because practice. you got to practice it. And think about this. I pick on volleyball players all the time. Some volleyball ladies from elementary and the transformation starts in middle school for serving, okay? 
Think about that first time going from elementary where you would serve a volleyball like this to where you toss it up and then hit it like that. It probably didn't go so well, did it? Maybe it did. I don't know. But think about that. It was not very good serving. How would you get better? Practice. Practice it. So with this, this will come naturally. As long as you don't give up on yourself, we won't give up on you. Okay? So with that, that double bond is after which carbon? Okay? Okay? Now, you'll notice that there's nothing written after that three, which you don't have to, because what is, like for instance, if you use grammar here, man, we're going to walk down to the lunchroom quickly. Quickly is what type of word in sentence form? It's an adverb. Yes, because the adverb tells you what the verb is doing, correct? So if it's quickly, it's telling you how fast you are walking. So this, okay, this says you've got a double bond. So this is like saying walking, and three is your adverb, like quickly. It's telling you how quickly you're doing. This is telling you where that double bond is. That's all it's doing. That's the only thing that three means. If there's not, nothing written after that, it just means where the multiple bond is located. It's when you take junior and senior level chemistries where you might have a double bond and a derivative on there. Okay, now let's go ahead and look at this top one. What is your parent chain? All of these have carbon. Okay, what is the prefix for four carbons? Okay, so we're going to write the name for this down here because we're running out of space. Okay, and we know that it's butane because is this saturated or unsaturated? It's saturated because we don't have anything like this. That would be an unsaturated compound. Okay, but since it's saturated, we know that it's butane. Okay, and this is just a little more specific because it's a ring structure you'd have to be able to tell the difference between these two because this is butane as well correct yeah. but does this butane look like this butane no. not by a long shot okay so what that means is you have to put a specific prefix in front of this and the term or word cyclo means ring structure Ring structure meaning three for cyclopropane. Cyclo ring structure for cyclobutane. Cyclo is a ring structure for cyclopentane. And going up the chain and further. Every single shape thing is cyclo. Yes, except benzene. Okay. Then the last thing we would have to do, is there anything branching off of this cyclobutane? Yes, yes there is. And we could just say methyl cyclobutane, but we want you to write that number on there. So what is the goal, what sport did we say is the goal for this naming compound? No. Golf. golf. The idea of golf is getting higher numbers or lower numbers. What's the lowest number you could assign that methyl group? One. One. So we want you to write that as 1-methyl cyclobutane. I understand you could say that it's just understood that it would be on the first one. But this is for good practice. We want you to put that one there. So that methyl group is located on the first carbon. Okay? Don't always associate it like this. Okay? 
don't always presume that number one is up here like hours on a clock. Okay? On any one of them. Don't always presume that it's on top. Okay? So that's why number one is down there. One methyl cyclobutane. Okay, so that is quite a bit of content. So I will hand out your papers here shortly. And for those of you who are tuning in later, if you have problems, you've got to ask questions. It is your responsibility to take initiative for that. We'll catch up to you next time. I just realized I hit pause instead of stop, okay? So, on that first one, we'll say the bottom. Number three, what is your longest continuous chain for number three? Okay, so you could say that number three is similar to this one. Okay, so use this as a way to help you out. Instead of nonane, this would say what? Where are those derivatives located? On which carbon? Two. Are they on the same one? Yeah. Yes, they are. So you would say 2 comma 2 dash dimethyl. Dimethyl what? Octane. You got it. Okay, we'll catch up to you next time.